<laughs> I found it. Uh, you found it? After all these years of searching, it really exists. Foundation Prime. This depicts the Foundation Elements artifacts from the start of time, scattered across the dimensions, and only I can gather them in one place. Just so you know, the Foundation Elements are the cornerstones of time and space, so they're kind of important to the entire universe. Your services are no longer required. But the elements can't be safely harnessed, it's too dangerous. And what about the pay rate you promised? <laughs> I will have them all. I will control their power. I will make universes collide. <laughs> Denied perfection. My dedication to this work has taken its toll. Not for much longer can I freely pass between dimensions. <laughs> but there is another way.
second while I change. Can you hear us now? Can you hear us now? Uh, tweak, tweak. All righty, sweet. Sweet. Turns out I had my uh, my. Uh, soundboard plugged into the wrong thing. Yep, so we just get to re-talk about everything we just talked about for like the last eight minutes. <laughs> At least we can talk about it again. Yeah. Have you guys seen the Guardians trailer? The new one? Guardians with Baby Groot? <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Punch all the numbers up. All righty. Let's see. Kick ass, right? Baby Groot. The, that's the, that's going to be the star of the movie. That's who is starring Guardians. Not everyone else. It's uh, Baby Groot and any, everyone else. That's the tagline. And everyone else. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember Sean Gunn's doing the motion capture again for Groot. So I know he did in the first movie. Basically because you know he was already there. Another character. His brother was like, "Oh, we still need someone to do Groot." He was like, "I'll do it." <laughs> Technically, Sean Gunn's in there twice. Right. I don't know if he's doing the motion capture for Baby Groot. Oh my god, that'd be hilarious. Right? <laughs> I thought you don't like Guardians of the Galaxy. It's kind of sad. Who hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's all right. He doesn't have to like I'm it. Just it's just saying, it's, it's so happy. Especially compared to a lot of other the comic book movies that are going out right now. That's, it's, just yeah, that's a, true. it's just a nice, fun space adventure. I'll try something. That's weird. I'm testing out a theory. Uh, a lot of people on the, the forums when I was talking about uh, some stuff, uh, looking up reviews for some of the kits, mm -hmm. say that Vankman for some reason can access the 2016 Ghostbuster stuff. Hmm. So I'm testing a theory. I'll wait for, the, I'll wait for that uh, download and then we'll come back to it. But we're going to start up our up a new, technically a new file because for some reason it deleted the... Unless it just, the update just gave both things the same timestamp, which would be really stupid. Because it's also. Very confusing. Yeah. I see he did. Yeah, Taco didn't like the first movie. That's fine. Anything uh, particular you didn't like about it, or was it just in ge uh, you didn't like the entire thing in general? Well, it definitely could have been better. I mean, and technically it was shot better, but they cut out like. 20 minutes of character development. Yeah. And it's like, and it wasn't even like it was a long movie. Compared to other current movies, it was short. Yeah. And so, like, you could have just kept in the 20 minutes. It's like, give them a little character development. Like, why does Peter Quill want to save Kamara in the, in the prison? You know? Right. Just little basic shit like that. Yeah, he, he didn't like the entire thing. <laughs> That's fine. I always say not everyone, everyone doesn't have to like absolutely everything. Yeah. So. It just seems weird. It's like saying you hate Star Wars. There are people who hate Star Wars. I know. I'm just saying it's weird. <laughs> uh, there may or who was it? Our cousin who was like, I haven't watched Star Wars. I'll never watch Star Wars. I just don't want. I just don't feel it. Like, what are you? <laughs> well, I think. What? Well, and it wasn't even a Star Wars versus Star Trek. He was just like, nope, nope, to need either. It's like. 
weird. Mm. Well, it's a nice thing, I guess. Kill Rocket Record as a copy of Deadpool. At least in the comp in the movie, yeah, probably. More than like uh more than anything, he kind of it he kinda of could be could be considered that, and then I'm Batman. I never do understand why they got what's his face to play Rocket. Oh, what what the hell is his name? From like uh, the hangover in Silverline's playbook. Yeah, um What's his face? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get that. I mean, I get Vin Diesel for Groot. He's already been, like, you know, a giant, friendly dude in the Iron Giant. I just mentioned he's done the whole, let me record this in literally a thousand different ways. Right. So we can get the right inflection yeah. that you need. A great line for our channel. Awesome. It's good to hear. It's very good to hear. I got. I'm picking out which uh, set of videos to uh, load up next. I'm uh, and then I have to re-download them from my computer. I have a plan. I know exactly what to do. Get her! That was your whole plan. Get her. It's scientific. Tuesday. I believe I'm off at 9 p.m. on Tuesday. I'll be home around 9.30. So, uh, yeah, I believe so. I'm about to leave for work. You guys have fun. Alrighty. Thanks for dropping by, uh, Voorhees Tattoo. Always feel free to drop in, uh, even while you're at work. <laughs> So this is our file. For some reason, it timestamped both files hmm. with the wrong information. Weird. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to our version of, uh, our playthrough's version of Middle Earth, so I can get the Dwarf Bounty, which is times two stud collection. I don't know. I've never seen that. Yeah. Podcast sounds fun. I do have a face for podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> on Monday, I will shoot you a message on Twitter with uh, my schedule for Tuesday, so so we can uh, so you'll know exactly when I'll be home and ready to ready to go. to go do something to unlock all the doctors first. Need to do something to unlock them? Technically. Who are you going to call? Judging by the state of your uniform, I'd suggest a dry clean. I'm good. <laughs> Long live the doctor. Hell yes. My new doctor is Newt Scrander, because you can tell me that man is not a doctor. He's got a case that's bigger on the inside, 
And he looks like he smashed David Tennant and Matt Smith together. <laughs> he acts like it too. You cannot tell me that man isn't a, do a doctor. Their world. The fact that I have a mini, <clears throat> I have two time travel machines on my uh, on my table right now. Such a great opening. London in the future, or at least what's left of it. Who else but the Daleks would cause so much destruction? to find a way up onto the street. I don't want to be late for the surprise welcome party. My favorite doctor, These Tenet. Yep. Nothing the sonic screwdriver can't handle. All right. I still need the dwarf's bounty, so we're going to go. We're going to go get it. Because... That way we can uh, uh, do super stunt clock because once you uh, you technically oh the knife nice that is a good that is a good doctor he was good. sadly all too forgotten for right? most people I think uh, who's more forgotten is eight eight can never catch Rick they even made him a special op uh, uh, mini episode to ex to show how he turns into the war doctor. It's like Paul McGann gets everyone forgets Paul McGann uh, as the doctor. I love going around all these worlds in like the TARDIS or like Ecto One or all that kind of stuff because it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Like Wizard of Oz world. <laughs> with this, with all this stuff, it's yeah. awesome. Uh, why do these things always have to be so bright? Did you see uh, the fiftieth uh, uh, anniversary episode where uh, Matt Smith and David Tennant uh, are teaming up and doing all the kind of their shenanigans with a uh, nope. John Hurt? I think I remember a little of this because you kept diving in the water to fight a monster. But we didn't get very far. Well, my other time machine. <laughs> there it is. Dwarf's Family. Best episode ever. Oh, I know, right? So good. And technically, the introduction to the 12th Doctor. Now we got the right thing for it. Now I think it costs a crap ton of money just to get it. I think it's like a million uh, studs just to unlock it, which is dumb. Mm. But I know like 
kind of, technically it's not it's kind of work like uh giving the system the business to to get it To Gothtropolis. <laughs> <laughs> I need a million studs. I already got like four, uh, 480,000, so close. Mm. Shouldn't take much more. Much more. I'm doing well. How about yourself? There we go. Respawn. Can it not flip it back over? No, that's, that's weird. Stupid. There we go. See, cars give you a crap ton. Right. Yeah. to run over all the other cars and check out all the slugs it generates. Nice. Okay. I'm this thing on uh, screen right. It's a title of you know, 15 TV remakes that were better than the movies that were based on. And I'm calling bullshit Starting with their third entry on this, because it says their third entry is Lethal Weapon. I have not seen the new show, but I highly doubt it is better than the original. Yeah, that would be hard to beat. And this one's kind of questionable, because um, they also list Hannibal. Now, granted, this show I've heard is amazing. I have not seen it yet. I want to. But you're going up from a movie. Let's start with Silence of the Lambs. A movie that won Best Director, Best Lead Actor, Best Lead Actress, Best Screenplay, Screen, uh, uh, you know, and uh, Best Picture. The big five at the Oscars. Very few movies have ever done that. It's hard to say something's better than that. You can say it's as good. I've heard it's great, but still. <laughs> Say something that can sweep the Oscars. There's something better than that? I don't, I don't know. Doing good. Finally got the days I asked for off, so I'm doing a lot of collab videos with one of my friends who's in the on the team. Nice! Very nice. Another one of this Highlander. On the list. Like the show was better. It's like okay, it's better than the sequels. I know that for sure because I know how terrible the sequels are. Right. Uh, but the original had Clancy Brown. It had Lex Luthor in it. Yeah. I mean, come on. Looking kind of like an undead Lex Luthor with the whole neck stitches. Yeah, I'll solve the problem. 
I think they probably spawned this because of how good Westworld has been. And I don't have HBO, so I haven't seen it. But it makes me want to get HBO. I w haven't been too sure about Westworld, mainly because the plot of the movie is that Joel Brenner's character was the only robot, uh, was the one that just came to life. And that was the point that he became sentient and started killing everybody. Well, yeah, that was... And now the point of the show is, the no, all the robots have always been sentient. And that's, like, that's weird, because that's not the point. No, I'm not sure if that's how it is, but there was, like, the Yul Brenner, like, generation was defective, and that's why they all got all fucked up, and they keep them in the basement, apparently. So I know that part, because I was looking at a thing of Easter eggs they had on there. There's one point where the guy running it, who I think is Anthony Hopkins, I had... I want to double check on that. Who are you gonna call? Ghost. By the state of your uniform, I it's right. it's funny. Uh, he goes down to the basement to look for something, and you can see in the back. Oh, that's awesome! Nice. I'm s it's like what up? all the siblings are just hanging out. All right. Yeah. And anyways, um, in the back you can clearly see what was the Yule Brenner robot. It's like you can't really see his face because it's it's you know unfocused on the background. But it's clearly his outfit. I was like, and that's, that's clearly your brother right there. Or his robot, at least. Yeah, and again with this, with the show better than the movie. The other one is the Bates Motel. Again, I've heard good things about the show. But, it's one of those... but you're going against Psycho. <laughs> right? Again, you could say it's better than the sequels, because it did have sequels. And a crappy remake. Yes. The shot for shot with Vince Vaughn? Oh, the oh fuck? Come on. This one's true, though. Stargate SG-1 was better, better than, than Stargate. Yeah. Hands down. That show was awesome. It's true. It was one of those. I also, it's one of those. They went out of their way to try to make it better than the movie because the movie, you know, but they keep it in the same universe. So it's yeah. one of those. I don't count it as better than the movie because it's set. It's not like it's a remake of the movie. No, it's there's like it takes it's place immediately after the movie. Kind of like the Buffy movie versus TV show. Oh, right. It's technically if you listen to her when she, and then the first season when she kind of gets a backstory about her. It's clearly the what happened in the movie. Maybe still it was Josh Whedon's before the studio got a hold of it version of the movie, but still the movie. Yeah, it still right. happened. Donald Sutherland was there. Rucker Howard. You got some good people in that movie. Pee Wee Herman. Right. Yeah. No, just being hilarious. Five seconds of Ben Affleck. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, here's another one. Get off topic, but I don't think you have ever heard my voice until you watched. My live stream. How did I say? You sound good. And you're right. That's probably that is probably the first time I actually <laughs> heard your uh, your voice. Yeah. Oh, here's another one on their list. And again, it's like you can't compete with this shit. You can either say it's as good or you can't shit on the old movie because the other the next one on the list is Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Don't shit on the original Evil Dead movies. What is wrong with you? Right. I mean, at least like half of this stuff is right. The next one down is the animated Star Wars shows, the Clone Wars and Rebels. I haven't seen Rebels, seen Clone Wars. And yeah, that's better than the prequels. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh, that... What just ding? That ding was a voice message on my phone. Uh, it's technically an iMessage, but it's technically connected to my text. But it's to a number I don't know. At least I don't think I do. At least when uh, iMessage pops up on my computer, it doesn't give me the names attached to my mm -hmm. contact. It just gives the number. Oh, it's Aaron. Oh. oh. Next Saturday. This, show, this list has a lot of classic movies because number one is Fargo. Saying that the, the TV show of Fargo is better than the movie. You watched the movie? Right. Great, I've even seen the show. And again, they it's one of those things I heard they surprisingly did well, but still. Have you seen the movie? Yeah. 
It's like, stop shitting on good movies by trying to say, yeah, you know what, your classic movie who won all the wars is great, but you know what's better? Shut up! It's worse than saying read the, like it's, the book was better. <laughs> it's like, well, first of all, the book usually is better. I know this. We all know this already. So you don't have to say it. So you don't have to say it. Suddenly, if it's still a good movie, it doesn't take away from the good movie. <laughs> so just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> stop it. <laughs> I can say you should only say that when it's shit like, um, it's a move. It's a book adaptation that most people don't realize was an adaptation. Like I did not know Die Hard was a book adaptation. Yeah, I didn't know that either until a while ago. No idea. Until I'm watching Cinefix on YouTube, and they have this, uh, what's the difference between the book and the movie version of something? And they did that for, like, their Christmas episode, like, two years ago. I'm like, wait, what? Like, what? There's some things, like, I didn't know, but I could guess, like, The Warriors was originally a book, but there was a lot of changes to it. And it was also originally based on a Greek myth anyway, so. Yeah. Technically. A whole bunch of books. It was basically, it's like a myth turned into a, an adaptation into a book turned into a movie. And what else? Oh yeah, apparently Hellraiser was like ridiculously close to the book. Like, almost to the point that you wouldn't have to read the book. Because it was, both book and screenplay was written by the same guy. Makes sense. So there's very few changes. And then there's things like Jaws that the movie was better than the book. Yeah. Like, watching that video about all the differences they made, the movie was better. Granted, if Spielberg had gotten his way and that shark would have worked, the movie wouldn't have been as good. So, I think he's even recently admitted that, that if he made it today with all the CGI, it would be a way worse movie because of that. It'd just be a CGI fest everywhere. The shark all the time, like he wanted. Yeah. It's like, but yeah, but not seeing the shark, it's what made that sh shit terrifying. Where like, they couldn't use the shark, so they used barrels, they threw barrels in and attached to the shark and suddenly just watched the barrels pop up one at a time, knowing that the shark's coming. It's a great scene! Yeah, look how many studs I already have after. Just, I just came back in here. Wait, where's your, where's your count? I didn't see it. Let me collect the stud and I'll show you. If it was like under you, it's like, it's on a blue background. Oh, okay, there it is. It's like, look where I am already. That's... Where's that then? Not bad at all. Doing all the collecting. <laughs> Let me double check, make sure I know how much I need to spend on this uh, freaking brick. They really need to stop making announcing reboots. It just makes me sad at this point. What, what's coming now? Escape from New York reboot. I'll say that wouldn't be too bad. I'm not sure about Especially that. Especially after its sequel. Honestly, though, I think one of the things that made it, though, was Kurt Russell. So Kurt Russell is, is Snake. And, like, and you can always joke that he's he's the basis of Mill Gear Solid. Oh, he is. They've, uh, they've, I patched dude named Snake. It. Okay. He, I was about to say, like, I patched dude named Snake. Go around being badass. Come on. <laughs> Let's see how much we need. But it's like, it's one of those cult classics. You, you, anytime you try to purposely remake a cult classic, it just fails so badly. And that's what Escape Room from New York became. Including a couple other Kurt Russell 80s movies. Like, Big Trouble in Little China. Right? Grant, that movie is one of those tailor-made, could only be made in the 80s for certain, like, sh shit you couldn't get away with but only in that time period mm -hmm. so they probably would never try to remake that but still 
it, it's one of those. It's like it's fun at its time. And the funny thing with with Escape from New York is it had this, such little budget that his whole computer monitor and looking down at the city thing, they had no budget for it, so they had just used glow in the dark tape. Yeah. To make it look like a computer screen. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Don't need you at the moment, Gandalf. Actually, I was just thinking about it, because uh, I said I had two time machines on my desk because of the TARDIS and the, and the door. No, I have three. I have the time train. Yes, that is three. Uh, why do these things always have to be so bright? According to my calculations, you are in dire need of my help. I can't tell how far ahead of time is this, because it's just... This is from two days ago. And it says that John Williams has started recording his score for episode eight. Nice. Makes me wonder how far along they are in production of the movie. Right. Oh, and speaking of upcoming movies, did you see Michael Keaton's going to be in Spider-Man? He's the vulture. Hmm. Which is funny. It's so goddamn funny. I was like, he's only up to the whole Birdman shit. <laughs> Which. Nice. Isn't that the best Doc Brown reaction? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shane. Hello. What's up, guys? Glad to see you in the command center. How are my fellow rangers? I've got the instructions to fix this, but not the studs. Any ideas? Yeah. And what's even funnier with um, Birdman as a movie? Because most people go, oh, ha, ha, you know, Michael Keaton playing this swash of actor who was known as a superhero movie. Right? Oh, being hosted by uh, our good friends. Oh. The Bowens. Sweet. Thank you for the host. Yeah, and um, what was the thing? Because most people just know Michael King go, oh, haha, ha, it's self referencing his actual career. The other self reference most people don't, I don't think a lot of people realize, is Edward Norton being the overly method dick of an actor in that sh movie. Because what I've seen from accounts from other movies he's done, he is that big of a dick. Just on on the regular. I mean, that's why he he did not continue being the Hulk. Because yeah. he was such a big pain in the ass. I don't know what's Bankman doing there. That looked very dirty. <laughs> okay, it's Peter Bankman. Yeah, he was making... Very awkward face and holding his. Uh, it's just this program back in a very bad way. Just stop that. Hey, what's up, Chris? How bad's the lag? Yeah, I haven't been on Twitch to check it yet. I've been looking up stuff to talk about. Did you guys. Uh... To all of our new viewers who are joining us here, have you guys seen the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 trailer? That's something we were talking about earlier. Baby group being awesome. You just did. Nice. My favorite part of the movie is just because it constantly makes us laugh. I am Groot. I, I am Groot. Groot. I, I am Groot. Groot. No, that's the button. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, that makes sense. I, the lag from your phone to the Xbox is... Ah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Just pulling up an article makes sense of something I saw earlier today on Pinterest of... Um, uh, a fan manip of this actress Catherine Winnick as Black Canary. She's on, like, Vikings and stuff. She's pretty badass. I was wondering, I was like, well, huh, that's cool. But I wonder why it made them make them think of that. Apparently, because she's gone on record saying she wants to be Black Canary in the movies. And it's like, well, yeah. Does your schedule allow it, though? You're on Vikings. Right. <laughs> Like, yeah, remember you gotta be able to don't just do don't kill thing. don't kill yourself wanting to do both. Because then you'll hate it. Well, not necessarily. I mean, Michael J. Fox probably was like was killing himself to do um, Family Ties and Back to the Future at the same time. As he put it, he's like, I don't really remember much during that time, but I know it was awesome. <laughs> because you know, most people know that um, they started filming with Eric Stoltz. Um, for a couple weeks, and it wasn't working out, and they went with Michael J. Fox. What pe most people don't know is Michael J. Fox was always their first choice. But n instead of going to him directly asking if he wants to do the movie, since he was on the show, they went to the producers first, people who controlled the show, asking if they could borrow him for the movie. They told them no, without telling Michael or anything. So they went with their second choice, went with Eric Stoltz, and after it just wasn't working, they went back to the producers and said, look, it's not working. Is there any way we can use him for this movie? And that's when they called Michael in. And they said, and they told him this whole thing, and he's just like, okay, because he's not going to say anything to lose his job. And they said, look, you can do the movie, but the show has to come first. It cannot... Um, do anything that interferes with filming of this show. And so he agreed to that, so he'd spend all day doing family ties, and then he'd get in a car, bend the back so he could take a quick nap, go over to filming Back to the Future at night, and then after, you know, like 20 hours of work, he'd finally get to crash for a few hours before starting all over again, and also had to work the weekends so they could actually do some outdoor shots during the day for Back to the Future. He had an intensely hectic schedule to try to do both. But he did it. I don't know how he did it. He's not sure how he, do he did it. If anyone tries to contest me on this shit, I heard it from him himself. Yeah, my little sister here, she got to meet him in person and uh, in New York. It was awesome. Because it turns out, I was on a trip to New York in college, my freshman year. And it turns out, someone who works with Michael J. Fox... Went to my tiny little college in the middle of Nebraska, and she arranged it so he'd come talk to the class. And even though he was having a bad day with his Parkinson's was acting up a lot, he still stayed for like an hour and a half to talk to us. It was fucking fantastic. It? My sister it. wanted to talk to me for like a month because that's her favorite. <laughs> she told me how much she hates me, and then she wouldn't talk to me for like a month. Because <laughs> I got to go, and she didn't. Yeah. Anyone? Then, we, then we met Ash Williams yes. in person. Oh my god, that again, was awesome. Again, my tiny little college in the middle of Nebraska. I don't know who sold their soul to get Bruce Campbell to come talk to us for two hours. But they did it, and he came, and it was, it was so awesome. fantastic. I love that he actually told the story of Congo, because he's done that at cons. And yeah. the fact, I'm betting who asked him that that night knew that story and brought it up just so he would do it. Yeah. I love how he does that. A crazy Congo movie. Oh my god. So weird. Such a weird movie. Okay, weird is an understatement of Congo. I mean, come on. Oh, Talking monkeys and lasers and. And, and Winston Zedmore. <laughs> and, and I was about to say, and Ernie Hudson. Just, it's pretty what? strange. What's even funnier to me is. Okay, Shannon and Alex. My wife and stepson were um, watching Sky High the other day, and it's one of those movies I was watching it, and it brought up a thought I had when I first saw that movie a number of years ago, which is the fact that Ash Williams and Snake Plissken never share a scene is a crime. They don't, do they? They don't. 
at all. And I was like, for what? okay, you have two huge action heroes in your movie teaching a new generation to be superheroes, and you don't have them in the same scene. Well, he wasn't teaching, but Wonder Woman sure as hell was, because she was the principal. Exactly. Seriously, if you haven't seen that movie, it's on Netflix right now. Just saying. It's a fun little movie. Definitely. It's, it's one of those... That's a movie I would have liked. Uh, the chick from The Flash is in it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, was, I was thinking, that's a movie I wouldn't have minded uh, sequels to, because that was a fun little universe I would like to see them yeah, develop. Yeah, it had such potential. So I always thought, I was like, you know, for what they set up... And the, and dark, the, and the dark hero with the most awesome name ever, More in Peace. Oh, I love his that pun name for him, Warren Peace. Holy yeah. crap, that was good. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, that's a very, very comic book name, and I like it. It's the only name I can remember, but it's an awesome name, so. It's like, if you're going to have a cool pun, and then we watched right after that, Zoom, the Tim Allen superhero movie that came out around the same time. It's yeah. actually not, not as bad as people give it crap for. They give it crap because, you know, it was their, oh, you know, they're coming out with this Sky High movie with teenage heroes. We gotta make our own. But what's funny is the uh, Tim Allen movie is hilarious. Tim Allen's great in it. He is just fan He's just fantastic. One of the things I like Dad's been having is, uh, I've been sitting with, on Wednesdays and uh, watching uh, Last Man Standing with Dad. Mm -hmm. That's actually a fun show. And Tim Allen is hilarious in it. Again, that was part of the problem. It's like, even if it was not as bad as the critics gave it credit to, the fact that it um, came out at the same time as Sky High, people were comparing it to it. And if it wasn't as good, it reflected in worse reviews than it probably would have gotten if it didn't come out at the same time. You're unlocking achievements on your Xbox? What achievements? Give us the deets. Bankman is a terrible driver. <laughs> well, we always knew that. That's why Winston drives. Well, even before Winston got there, that's why he always sat in the back. Yeah. So if you ever get times two studs for being in cars, does that mean you get times four when you get the double stud counter? If you're, yeah, it's technically not times two in the vehicle until you up, unless you upgrade the car. Well, it says times two right there. Oh, okay, never mind. Then yeah, then it's, it, it yeah, it does uh, double up. Cool. That, I actually never noticed that before. <laughs> so you can find any more cars to blow up because they give you the most studs in this level. Instructions to fix it, but not the <laughs> well, that's not hard to do since an Eric doesn't drive. Ouch. It's bad that I know exactly where in the movies that ouch comes from. Yeah, I know, right? I know exactly. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm just not getting any reading. But are you sure, are you sure you're using, using that, that thing correctly? correctly? Oh, yes, I, I, I think, think so. so. But I know there's no animals in there. <laughs> Got all the cars in here for now. Now I have to exit out to reset the world so I can put more cars in here to get more studs. And I exited with just barely five. Uh, got back in here with barely 500 after our uh, the first time we started. I now have 600. Oh, there you go. That's pretty decent uh, with the car to get. If you blow up all the cars in this level, you can get at so least a hundred grand in studs. Which is actually, you know, not horrible. It's a great way to, uh, if you're looking for a uh, quick way to make money in a Lego game. <laughs> Which, you know. <clears throat> Let's see. Other new things we were thinking of talking about. Did you have anything else that you were thinking of talking about today? Or mostly movies. Mostly, well, I already come out. We haven't seen yet. What? Can't wait to see. 
Uh, looking through ScreenNet, I'm reminded there's also a lot of terrible movies coming out. <coughs> it's like, you just know it, you can feel it. <laughs> right. Like, this one I just pulled up. I forgot they're rebooting the mummy for the whole Marvel, the, uni the Universal Monster Movie Universe they want to do. And it's with Tom Cruise. Are they so? Are they like like the Brandon Fraser movie they're rebooting, or like? Yeah, like the Universal Monster, the Mummy. Okay, which I, which no, the original was also Emotep, so the, yeah. the last so, movie was technically a reboot. Yeah, the, yeah, the Brandon Fraser one is the reboot of the first one. If you watch the first, the original Mummy, it's yeah. almost verbatim. Yeah, it's just more action. It's just more action, which I don't it's mind. Still, it's still Emotep. He's it's still, still looking for his his pieces for to a, regenerate. And, he's and it's still just, it's just a, Boris Karloff. Yeah, and he's just looking for an Oxo moon. Yeah. So it's it's the same, it's same thing. It's the same story, like just an action movie. Yeah, which and I didn't mind. I thought that was really uh, really clever on their part to kind of do that to kind of help uh, fix the franchise. And then the sequel, I love the sequel. One of my favorite lines is from that movie when uh, uh, Evie uh, they're escaping from the museum when uh, Emotep is resurrected and he's sending his super guards after him and she's trying to block the door with the chair outside the museum. <laughs> Honey, Honey, these, these guys, guys don't, don't use, use doors. doors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about the, it's just a chest. Nothing wrong came from opening a chest. Yeah, yeah nothing came, uh, bad can happen from reading a book. You remember how that one turned out? Yeah. Plus you got more, um, Odette Fair in that one. And you get to be more badass. Definitely. It's fun. It's always fun. All the studs. So, with the reboot of the Universal Monsters, are they doing Dracula and uh, Fra Frankenstein and Wolfman? From what I hear, that's the plan, and if. That little teaser looks correctly. It's not Imitep. Some chick. Weird. Yeah. Weird. And Russell Crowe's also in it. <laughs> I might watch that. That actually, I don't. I want to give. I'll give it. I, I mean, as a person, he's kind of out there. But Tom Cruise is a damn good actor, so I do have faith in at least he'll be good. And Russell Crowe, he's not too shabby himself. So, like I said, there's that triangle of things that can uh, that hold in a movie. You have the director, the writers, and the actors. One can fail, and the other two can kind of save it, and just make it where you like it just because, you know, certain actors are doing their best, or the, and the writing's good, or if the directing was good, and the actor, you know. So, one can fail, and it'll still be fine, but if the writing isn't there, and the acting and the directing isn't, and or directing isn't there, then it could, then it gets, you know, pretty bad. I don't know. I bet you like those <laughs> You know what, Aaron? I kind of do. I kind of do. That's because I want to buy, uh, buy one of the red brick abilities. And I need a, I need a million bricks to do it, which seems kind of pricey. But once I get it, everything else is almost uh, hilariously uh, cheap. If Ezra Miller understands the character, he's Ezra Miller is playing the Flash in the movies, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. And this house is like he he's comparing the Speed Force to the Force from Star Wars. Well, he's not wrong, in it's all like, honesty. They're pretty they're pretty similar, so you can get he can get away with saying that. There. It just seems like I'm. Maybe it's just because, like, I don't think people will understand where he's going from this. I mean, on base level, yeah, you can see it, because, like, 
speed force is part of the forces that control the universe. Serious speed, you know. Speed activates what's hot, what's cold, what's fast, slow, whatever. And a few people can harness it. Right. Oh. But just, it feels like people are going to like, compare it too much to the Force and not its own entity. I don't know. It just makes me, you know, tilt sideways. I see that. I can see that. I can, I can see that more. I mean, eventually Flash, like, becomes... They have to harness it. He has the lightning powers. Because he's the lightning. You know? Yep. You can kind of see it. It's just... It just makes me feel like, like some people might get the wrong idea or something. I don't know. Okay, that's kind of funny. Uh, so Billy Crudup is going to play Henry Allen. This is the same guy who's Doc Manhattan. <laughs> it's before it has a fun. left side and dark side, and somehow Barry Allen. Holy number. Yeah. It's like duct tape. Exactly. Well, technically, all Jedi can use Force Lightning, but they they can't, and they have somewhat super speed, kinda. And you can kind of see it in uh, some versions of a uh, in um, in the prequels. You can see it in the original. You really can't. They really don't touch about it in Force Awakens because you don't really see any Jedi in that one, <laughs> except for you know, uh, mm -hmm. emo Skywalker. Yeah, which. Hmm. We need to elaborate more on him. But he's clearly got some issues. And why he thinks his grandpa is, uh... Why is he praying to him like a deity? That's and weird. And that his grandpa uh, died uh, as a part of the dark side and not saving his uncle and coming back to the light side of the force and becoming a... F you know, his yeah, dad, it's... his grandpa is a force, is a good guy, force ghost. Why hasn't his grandpa shown up and go... I'm not evil anymore. Why do you have my helmet? Right? That's, that's a question. Where are the Force Ghosts? Where's Obi-Wan and Yoda? And fucking Anakin. An old guy, Anakin. Not Hayden Christensen, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Emo Walker. <laughs> but it's... Like, here's the problem I have with that. With the new one, and we won't get answers until, until 2018. Yeah. Um, is... J.J. Abrams likes the concept of a mystery box. He does not like the concept of actually putting something in that box before he creates the mystery around it. Right. He just lets people try to fill in the blanks and then may or may not pick one of those answers to be the right one. Or just no answer at all. I mean, you've seen how Lost turned out? A lot of mystery boxes, none of them open. And there's a lot to unpack with little emo Skywalker. And... Cause there, there's can be some good stuff there. With the whole, how young was he when he was taken? How much has he been brainwashed to, from the dark side? It's his whole tantrums more of the light side of himself fighting with that brainwashed dark side. There's a lot to unpack and not just make him evil and dumbass. But here's the problem though, Abrams isn't going to be a part of any of the other movies. He's only, he set up a mystery box for movies he is not going to be writing or directing. I know, that's what makes it worse. It's like, again, he likes the idea of a mystery box, doesn't like the idea of putting stuff in it, or the idea of, hey, this is supposed to be a movie. It should be able to be self-contained as well as continuing on a story. You did not know those things. Good job, Abrams. Go back to TV shows. You're better than that. Yeah. Because he also started... Also, this show, I always keep restarting and never finishing for somehow. Because I, I keep, there's this midpoint, I keep going, oh god, oh god, oh god, I can't look. Is a uh, Fringe. 
It's a great show. Yeah, I gotta watch that. You keep telling me about it. Branch is fantastic, and he did create that show. I don't know how much of it he was part of, but it was awesome. I like that show. And it has... We got granted, it's not the real Scarecrow, but he was Scarecrow in Arkham City. Not Arkham City, but Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight. That guy. This creepy-ass evil voice. Because there is a parallel dimension that where he's kind of gone, gone kind of crazy in the other world, and his Scarecrow voice is kind of that voice he uses. Nice. Yeah. It's a good show. It's kind of like Abrams was watching, like, X-Files. He's like, you know what? Instead of aliens, what if even crazier shit happened? But I don't explain it. No, actually, there's pretty well explained stuff in French. It's like, it is, they do have season long, what the fuck is going on type shit. But it actually gets explained and gets expanded upon within the next seasons. It's like, go, go back to that, JJ. Where you have your fun little box, but there's stuff in it. And you finally get to un open it and unpack it. And more, and turns out there's another box inside that box. <laughs> <laughs> there's just more shit going down. <laughs> like, they do with these really incredible things. Like, okay, there's these guys you find out that are basically like Uwatu, right? It's a whole group of them. They're just there to observe. They don't interact, they don't do nothing. You find out, you find out about these guys in like the fifth or sixth episode, around there. And that they're just in the background, like, because they keep finding them in like pictures and stuff, or the security footage of a hospital in a previous episode. You go back to those previous episodes, you'll see them. Just a quick glance, like, they're, you know, getting on the elevator when the character's getting off. Or stuff like that. They're there. They were there the whole time. It was a great setup. And that happens through the whole show. It was pretty it was pretty tight. Like story wise and actually showing shit wise. And I haven't checked right lately. Um last time I did check it was on Netflix. I don't know if it still is. I hope it still is. Another one just put in your queue. <laughs> Alright. JJ decided he likes more of the idea of make people guess for years on end and then never give answers like Moss. I think that's the problem with that's the cause of problems in Force Awakens, I think. Loss was too popular. Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> All those questions and no answers, and he's like, hey, people loved that, didn't they? No, that part pissed them off so badly. <laughs> they were looking for puzzle pieces, and turns out there was no puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> there was no actual picture. Nobody liked that part. <laughs> but that's what he did with Force Awakens. He just dropped puzzle pieces without an actual puzzle to put them in. And effed over the future writers of, that, of those movies. Yeah. I mean, granted, you get better hints with certain things. With some deleted scenes put back in. Like, it turns out... Uh, what's his place? Face... Um... Played by Simon Pegg, who was um, from the first planet. Got pissed and went looking for the Millennium Falcon because he bought it. It's his. Took it back. And he confronts um, Ray about it. And Chewie tears his arms off. <laughs> That's a thing that happens in a deleted scene. I was like, that would, that would add a little more context, I think, because... Chewie that protective of her already? Unlikely, unless he already knew her. I mean, granted, we all know that they already know her because she's clearly a Skywalker. I don't care which parent it is. Exactly. And it's like, and how awkward ready to give up, give her the Falcon uh, Han Solo was. It's like, okay, you clearly don't like seeing your daughter again or something. Or niece, I don't at this point, I'm so tired of the question, I don't care anymore. 
But there was it's the same problem as Guardians the first Guardians had. There was they were so concerned with putting shit tons of action in, they forgot to put in the character development. Or just deleted it. Like it was already in there, but they edited it out. So no, the character development's important. Blowing up yet another Death Star. Not as important. Right. It's like we've seen the Death Star blow up. Oh. We've seen it twice. There are two movies about it. And they're fine. Yeah. We don't need to watch an, uh, yet another one about that. Yeah. All right. We'll go through a level without the the brick. We'll probably get a uh, bunch of studs in that. That way we can just uh, have at least one <laughs> levels under our belt. Because right now I've just been yeah, uh, collecting stuff. Yeah, you've just been We've just been bullshitting for an hour or so. <laughs> hey. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, again, again, I, I, make, I feel like it makes me sound like I hate The Force Awakens, and I don't. It's fun, it introduces a lot of great new characters. I'm excited to learn more about, to see more about Poe Dameron, Rey, and Finn. I think they're, they're great setups, I don't care how many people complain about Rey. I was like, you know what? Yeah, she already knows how to use for, Force a shit ton. It's been established that clearly she is a Skywalker and has been trained as a child. And she knows about the mythos of the Jedi, so she's kind of taking a guess here. Because Shira is taking a guess that she's probably a Jedi, considering Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber came to her. And she was hearing all those Force Ghost voices. You know? So, it's like, she knows what they can do, and she's going, hey, let me see if I can do this. And it just fucking worked, because... At first it didn't, but you have to have confidence, and once you got it, like, confident and firm with it. It works kind of like um, using the um, Jedi mind trick on James Bond. Right. Because that was James Bond. And it's like, at first it didn't work until she got a little more forceful and confident with it. And like when people say it's like she uh, knows too much already, it's like Luke with pre with Really, no training was able to... Use the Force to blow up the first Death Star. As well as, you know, be able to make his lightsaber come to him in the Wampa Cave in the second movie. Because he had no training then either. Exactly. And even with Yoda, he had very little training by the time he got to the third movie. I am, and I am uh, interested in what they do with Rogue One. I'm. It's like it's kind of kind of fun because, first of all, it's humans. It's just normal non-Jedi types. We're going out and trying to save the day with the rebels. And. Can't even do Mexican. <laughs> what? What? What does that mean? I don't know what that is. Um, it's like, Aaron, you're gonna have to explain yourself. Whatever, Quicksilver. Person you're clearly based on. Um, anyways, yeah, because I know they had to have a couple of like, you know, the actors who are either old or dead, so we had to, and they're supposed to be younger anyways in this movie, so. Let's have some people just look like them, like uh, Mom Mothra. Yeah. First time I saw the trailer and I saw her, I was like, holy shit, did they clone her? Same with um, Grandma Tarkin. He's in it. And so that's how you know it's before New Hope and not the, before the third one. And he looks a lot like that guy. Hmm. I was like, oh shit. And they do have Vader in it. And they do have the Vader voice back. Nice. He, yeah. He's listed. I made you. Uh. We're so confused. Yeah. It's like you might have been having another conversation, but that just confuses us even more. But you added the same, so now we don't know what the hell you're doing. It's just saying. Okay, I think I remember a little of this.
And there's a fight and you know, you're playing with portals. Seriously, that look on Penguin's face. With this proton pack just like that. What the hell? Some dirty stuff, Penguin. Go sit in a corner. We haven't updated our our vehicles yet. Uh, I was gonna pull one of those wall up, walls off to get some, uh, one of our things, but can't do that just yet. I can blow up all this other crap though. Since I was here, I, I just thought of something that I saw a few weeks ago on YouTube that will make Cards Against Humanity even funnier. Really? Cards Against Humanity charades. <laughs> you take the white cards and you try to act out what's on the white cards. If you lose, you drink. It looked... It's like I watched the video. It was fucking hilarious. Some of the shit they had to try to act out. That is yeah, pretty funny. Back down. I gotta land on that little thing, that little platform. So what's with your hoverboard piece? What's... Oh, it's inside, inside of the. Uh... So what's on top of this thing? What is that? Oh, it's just a Lego piece. Ah, oh, that holds it to the the base. Oh, damn it. I can freaking land on it. If we had a group of gamers, what we call ourselves as a team name, well, we wouldn't be able to use Haymaker since Clayton <laughs> doesn't uh, since Clayton doesn't drink. He's uh, more strange than CM Punk. Okay, CM Punk's a wrestler who's. I know who CM Punk is. Okay. I see him. Uh, there we go. Uh, grammar correct hate mail. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. Hack in the system. What we call ourselves as a team. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah. 
Like, if you couldn't have guessed that, <laughs> that part about the, uh, these two. Why you need the doctor? Ah, little Benny's on the computer. Right. Oh. And trip. Because <laughs> that's what Batman would do to the Flash. <laughs> or like Superman, who just clotheslined him. Oh wait. That's one of my first introductions to the Flash in the Superman episode when he shows up to Metropolis for the race. Yeah, and he's literally running circles around Superman, and Superman just puts his arm out and clotheslines him. World's greatest detective strikes again. Cosmic treadmill? Highlander. <laughs> yes. Can be only one. <laughs> Very creative. Shall we say best of three? Gravity. Element of gravity. You'll turn your world upside down. <laughs> well, I have a hoverboard. Right. I have a Ghostbuster with a doctor and a goddamn wizard with Batman. <laughs> I don't need your gravity. <laughs> Uh. Yeah, that's what it was. Strange like Highlander? Oh. Um, oh, it wasn't necessarily there can be only one. It kind of ended up there was only one. Sort of. A couple have survived. Most interesting and entertaining. God. Like I said, one of them is basically they set up their relationship in movie wise, not comic book wise, like, um, Hal and Sinestro. Oh, okay. So they both survive, as well as another guy. I guess I can kind of see Mads being kind of like Clancy. They're both very scary guys. Which is a fine in real life. Oh, I was like, watching, uh, have you, have you seen the show Leverage? Yeah. Okay. Season. I've seen all of it okay. several times. I think it's the last season when uh, Clancy Brown shows up and he's the uh, corrupt banker. I think it's the third. Yeah. But you know the episode. Yeah. Okay. I saw that episode and I was like, see this? This proves why he could be live action Lex Luthor and intimidating as shit. What, have you seen him? He's in the flash. As Eiling. Yeah. Which after credit scene? There's two. And I haven't seen the movie yet, so please don't talk about it. <laughs> Just say one or two. Oh, wait, you're talking about the second one. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Well, it's not so much there can be only one. 
and like he's But yeah, I could I could kinda see where you're going with that. I know what he's talking about, I get it. it's a setup for the next one. Oh okay. Yeah. It, yeah, it's not so much that it can be only one, but it's a similar effect. Master Bill. with Batman. Look with Steve in the Lego form. Okay. You know the first thing I did when I got my TARDIS uh, uh, for this game? I took, I grabbed Batman and put him inside it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know my secret identity? Nope, no. How'd you even get here? Because I'm Batman! <laughs> Bring it on, Metal Man. I was thinking more of Rocky, but that also works. I remember him. I was trying to think of his name. I was like, I know who. It's like that's a Street Fighter character. It's in Wreck It Ralph. Zangief. 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 Zangief, no bad guy. Who will curse man's head like sparrow egg between thighs? No, no. Clancy Brown's like Luthor in these games. Hell yeah. Apparently, Catherine uh, tried to watch Batman v Superman with Annie. It scared her. Well, of course it did. She thought Batman was the bad guy. So that guy might, might be able to highlight all his Nassire's problems. When a child thinks Batman's the villain... Yeah. Reputation. I find his best work when he was working as, as a patent, patent clerk. clerk. You know how much a patent, patent clerk earns? No! First thing I like, the university yeah. gave us money, money and facilities. facilities. We never produce anything. anything. You've never been out of college. college. You don't know what it's like out there. I've worked, worked in the private sector. sector. They expect Fact results. results.
Oh yeah, because any villain is not a villain from their own point of view. All sorts of cool stuff today. Shang! I will find you. Heroes, I uh, came to a realization. It's like, um, discuss this with you, but not you guys. Came to a realization if you guys seen the trailer for Wonder Woman, and she gets her friend Ed and Candy in these ones. In this one, Ed Candy is played by an actress who was in Shaun of the Dead, and that's fucking hilarious. It's not Sean's girlfriend, it's the other one. Can't remember her name. The actress from the original office, who was, um... Yeah. Oh, oh crap, I just blanked. She, she was the British Pam. Yeah, she was British Pam. That's, I was Kinda like how Martin Freeman was British Jim. Yeah. Have you seen the Honest trailer for Sherlock? It came out right before Doctor Strange came out. I don't think I have. And there was, they mentioned uh, Martin Freeman as uh, uh, Watson. He was like, he should just give uh, funny reaction shots. And they show a couple from the show. And in between those, they show some from the office. And they're like, yeah, some of those from the, were from the office. I bet you couldn't even tell. Right. <laughs> Never go that way! Face. All right. Need my Ghostbuster to just blow all the shit in the room up. Style. Yeah! I will find you. Uh. 
keep saying that. It's like, I don't... We keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. He's nowhere to be found. Exactly. Up, oh, Juggalo Clown 88 with a level up. So you guys are all now level two. I have no idea if I'm a level or not. If you're logged into my uh, on my channel. I know. I, I for the last last couple times I was here, I did. You probably I, do. I have no idea. You probably are at least level two. I'm somewhere. Fuck I know. And shouldn't your cloak be white, Gandalf? Right? Last skulls. Yes. Saruman's writing a basilisk. Right? It's a little weird. The best one's like a bitch. I'm so right. Not that shit on his face so hard, just sticks. Well, whatever it is, it's gotta get by us. Go right. get her, Ray. <laughs> Did you say it's my spoon? Yeah, it's something from his his, his stuff. Which it just I makes no me think of the tick. Out. Right. It's like, it's something to do with the 12, which I have yet to see any of 12, which... I've only seen one season of 11. I'm good. Go back to watch uh, Dr. Donna. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, right until the, the very end. But other than that... I'm Apparently to it's 12 uh, who gives River the the uh, screwdriver she has when she meets Tenet. Because right. they, uh, I was reading something on the Sonic Screwdrivers because they actually show that he finally has gotten his own, and it shows it show, showed the clip of the episode where uh, she talked uh, that she described to David Tennant's uh, doctor about when he gave her the screwdriver. By the and way, they recreated it verbatim. By the way, super hilarious. She's on in Gilmore Girls: A Year in Life. <laughs> As this crazy eccentric lady that Gil that Rory is trying to write a book about. <laughs> She's just literally crazy. Well, of course she is. What else was I thinking of? Thinking of something else. Oh, yeah, the tick. So, on our road trip, past week, I was mentioning about how uh, the voice of Jason Whitaker in the Aussie, uh, Aussie tapes My land low. was the tick. And like I mentioned that, and I was like, and it's catchphrase, spoon. She goes, spoon? I was like, yeah. She goes, why spoon? I don't know, just spoon. Spoon! <laughs> she seals it. It's like a thing he says. Yeah, it's just a thing he says. It, it makes so much sense that when you find out that... At least I think in the live action, Ben Edlund wrote a bunch of the tick. It's like, well, the guy who created, you know, Magic Wish and Well and Supernatural and the fish and all that crazy stuff, of course he's the one who wrote for the tick. Who else would it be? Right? <laughs> it's no spoilers, I promise. She's just in it and she's crazy. That's a, you could look that up on IMDb. I don't think that's a spoiler. I don't think that counts. I 
Uh, yeah, Gilmore Girls is kind of fun, because the question is, um, Brad Jones, aka Sim, is now doing a review. Because him and his friend Brian love Gilmore Girls. Well, he's a good show. Yeah. Except for the last season. Yeah, and even in the cast hates it. They pretend it doesn't exist. Uh, because it's so out of character, and Amy and her husband didn't write it. Um. But anyways, uh, it's how they describe it, and they're totally right. They're kind of like, it's as if Amy had been writing seasons of this show the whole time, and when they finally, uh, went ahead with A Year in the Life, they said, well, I'm already up to date, so let's use season 17. You know, because that's what we're on right now. And that's exactly what it feels like. He just jumped into season 17. But also apparently it's funny because Brad they're doing uh, reviews of one episode at a time which is fair it's movie length but it's funny because he was accidentally kind of dressed like Luke Danes he had a flannel shirt on you know his Classic backwards hat he always wears, and this leather jacket like Luke wears when he's getting dressed up. Cause he's been talking to one of his friends who's watching it with him, and he, uh, he goes, when Luke comes on, he's like, he's my favorite, and she goes, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> he's like, oh no, this was just coincidence, but he's my favorite. <laughs> Cause of course that's his favorite. Brad Jones' favorite character is the grumpy one. <laughs> <laughs> Time to punch that snake in the face! It's just one boss fight after another. I fought tougher enemies than this with my cowl on backwards. That reminds me, I was just, um, earlier I was reading this whole list of, you know, morning after texts of, you know, that usually start off with, I wasn't that drunk. Or, um, you know, how drunk was I? And one of them, he's like, I think I couldn't have been that drunk. You know that someone claiming you can win, that, like, win against them in an annoying contest. Well, how does that prove I was drunk? You said it to an orange. <laughs> You're always so concerned about your reputation. Big Brickhead, welcome to the to the channel. Okay, Tommy. Yeah, we've got a follow. Awesome. Thank you for the follow. I'll I'll definitely have to check you out. Hey. If you get a chance, uh, Janine, can you write down that name so I don't forget it? I don't have a pen. All right, one second. Quick pause. Uh, there should be a pencil, uh, any of those pencils. Uh, okay.
All righty. This way I won't forget. This is even for you. Stop this charade. Taken you down before, and I'll do it again, Lex. Uh, we do not have year two yet, and since it's Christmas time, we can't buy for ourselves. We it's have that of, rule. It's kind of a rule in our family. It's like starting in November, you cannot buy gifts for yourself because someone might buy it for you for Christmas. So we do, don't have year two to play around with yet, but in all probability, right after Christmas, because <laughs> either someone's buying it or for us or. We're going to buy it and start it. Definitely. What was that? I don't know. Now, your punishment for cheating. Oh yeah, I heard this um, a couple days ago. It's it's kind of awesome. Uh, Lego Batman movie, right? Right. It's coming out in February. Billy D. Williams is Two Face. <laughs> oh, like he's back. It's Harvey. Oh my god. <laughs> that works. Right? He's already been Harvey Dent. Let's bring him back. <laughs> Definitely. He'll finally get to play Two Face, <laughs> the role he didn't get to do the last time. What? Right? Eddie Redman wants to star, on, star in Doctor Who. Oh, big fucking shock. If anyone's seen Fantastic Beasts, that was clearly his audition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't have the sevens wave it. Instead of just saying, doing what Skylanders does and going, hey, we're just make a billion sequels. We're just going to do another year where you don't have to buy a brand new game. Mm -hmm. We're just going to give you new stuff. Which is even better. To beat that. That doesn't remind me of right now. What? Let's just go ahead and double. Yes. Oh, God damn it. All right, we're like... Sheer. I, I, I can't confirm this because I haven't read anything on my... But... Our sister told me, live action, Is it Legend of the Hidden Temple movie. Yeah. It's like, uh, Will there be the shrine of the silver monkey? Better be. <laughs> Is the voice of Olmec still around and will he be back? Cause if not, then I don't know what to tell you. That's just wrong. <laughs> That voice is amazing. Yes. Let's heat things up a bit, shall we? <laughs> Seems like this level. It's one boss fight after another. No breaks. What is this? I know, right? Oh, the classic The Floor is Lava game. Exactly. <laughs> the Floor is Lava. This is 
quite a battle, huh? I would even call it electrifying. Like this guy and his puns. Hey, we get it, dude. You love the sound of your own laugh. I really hate when it does that, where it won't let you pick a different character. That's cheap. Jump to the side instead of, you know, or jump to the wrong side, which I don't want you to. Pisses me off uh, when uh, your next door character instead of letting you jump in the vehicle. Nope, we're gonna play spin, uh, Ring Around the Rosie with characters. Yeah. Yes, we should. Just grappling hook Gandalf in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice stud count. And the rule breaker. I love it. that's the one thing I'm oh I go for specifically in each level to make sure I get and then go back for mini kits and shit. Yeah. Hey, Scooby-Doo villain. <laughs> that staff's important somehow. Put it somewhere secure. Every time you get one, it brings up the thing and it tells you where to put it on the actual kit. So you're constantly building on the kits, which is kind of awesome. I always thought that was a cool little extra. It's like, we get it. These stones are, it's like, just the chevrons on our Stargate. Just stick them on. It's fine. Right? <laughs> Let's 
see. It's like out of the old set, the only characters I really super uh, need are like maybe a ninja for the spin power, but I can always buy uh, use the bricks to buy the silver guy. Um, I need this guy because he has the gyrosphere, which you need for specific levels because you need his vehicle to open crap. Uh huh. Yeah. And only he has one of those to do those. It's like, uh, so you have to buy. It was like, even though that means, I mean, Chris Pratt's in this game twice, technically. We will force you to buy this generic Jurassic World worker well, so you can get with his Chris, vehicle. He comes with Chris Pratt. Okay, I was about so, to say. It's like, and, and it's like, so you get, so that means you would get Chris Pratt and his Raptors. And then, so if you bought. Honestly, if I got him, I would also need to get Emmett, so I have Chris Pratt twice. <laughs> <laughs> but, and it's like, I'd want to get, I need, I do need to get Scooby or someone with a power set like him where he can dive and dig at the same time, so I can do something in the Ghostbuster overworld. Ah. Uh, and the, um, no, uh, him and Slimer, because they both can swim and do crap underwater at the same time. I thought you had Slimer. I don't. I have Stay Puffed. <laughs> because that's awesome. <laughs> no, start making a list. It's Christmas. Yeah. It's like, Scooby-Doo. Uh, let's see. I have... Let's see. One of them would be nice. Someone with X-ray vision, kind of like Superman. Super. The one thing that irritates me is with Supergirl... If you want to get her, you have to buy a brand new starter set because that's the only way you can get her now. She doesn't have her own set. She comes in a starter for the for year two. So if you want her, you have to buy a whole new regular starter. That's stupid. Yeah, I know. But it's also the same as with Batman, Gandalf, and Wild Style that... The only way to get them in, is in your starter kit. But that makes sense because they're the stars of the game. But True. if you but if like when we thought we lost Gandalf and you couldn't start a new story because you didn't have Gandalf, that's the bullshit part that you need to be able to buy spares. Yeah, I did find a guy who was going to sell me one on eBay hmm. at, for like five bucks. So I would have gotten around it if I hadn't found mine. But still, it's like I'm sure other people, especially kids who play this, have lost figures before. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And to not be able to start a new game because you've lost a figure. Stupid. Big transform, dive, drill, eliminate gravel, mini access, sonar. He can do the gyrosphere switch. So I can. Okay. Just so get I want Jake. Jake. I want Jake. Because he comes with BMO. <laughs> oh, little BMO. Uh, super strength, drone mazes. Okay, so he can do a lot. Ex but I need him. I need him to be able to dig. Because <clears throat> Slimer underwater in the Ghostbuster world, there are these uh, gla glass uh, statues. You need sonar to blow up. He can be underwater and use sonar. No other character can that I've mm. seen so far. And Scooby can swim and and dig at the same time, which I need in the Doctor Who overworld. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, that's Sonic. Mm -hmm. Let's see Sonic. Speed. Nice. Mm -hmm. I want to get the Sonic a lot because you get Green Hill Zone. Better come with the right music. If it, oh, if it didn't, that'd be so much of a stink. Let's see. And then the A Team, you can, like with the Ghostbusters, you can turn into every yeah. member of the A Team, which is fantastic. You see, his he can do the Wonder Woman uh, laser beam reflect by using his. His gold chains. <laughs> so that's clearly Mr. That's T. That's legit. That's, that's <laughs> legit right there. Yeah. It's like... But then again, when you're if you're playing the A-Team, in all seriousness, you're only going to be playing as B.A. Baracus. Yeah. Who, who asked what you want to be? It's like, yeah, it may be Hannibal, but what could he do that be, that you're going to want him on your team? It's like, you want B.A. Baracus. Yeah. Sword Switch. Apparently there's Sword Switches now. And then, then she's got a shit ton, shit huge list. Like has magic and heart regeneration. She can do stealth and mind control. Has mini access. That's badass. Her is like 
certain characters just do crap tons of stuff. <laughs> like, it was funny, like, with Cyborg, I had, he did a lot to round out my crew for mm -hmm. when, uh, the, in year one. And then I got, uh, the Doctor, who, and the TARDIS, which helped out. And then the vehicle that, um, Cyborg comes with, uh, can use the dig ability. So mm -hmm. I... <laughs> Too bad you can't use it under freaking water. Yeah. The sh I love the uh, the other section. It's called the shard, mm -hmm. which and when you look up there, you have the shard that all year two stuff is. But then you see something off in the distance. Clearly, something for what a year three would be on. Yeah. <laughs> which is badass. Because that shows that they are thinking that far ahead. It's like, we're, we're just going to make more crap for our game, not try to make a sequel until, like, farther down the line. Shouldn't we have arrived by now? Yes. Something's up. Check your relic scanner. Ah, uh, not good. So what do we do? What I suggest, you mind your heads. <laughs> like this wild style i assumed i just caught him at a bad time before uh what i'm the doctor i locked onto your scanner remember that before you said before well spotted batman go to the head of the class <laughs> this, uh, this is the tardis it travels time i've met space you before but you have met and relative yet. dimensions that's time travel for you, you did they just flip between no, get off the white and get off the gray right there Like I say, time machine, not a 3D printer. <laughs> Just give me a grapple gun later. <sighs> okay, out you go. Where are we? Does it matter? Call it, I don't know, Dave. <laughs> If this is a, a reflection of the 12th Doctor, he's going to be fun to watch. It'd be more fun if he could swear in like every other thing Peter Capaldi's in. Yeah. When he was first announced, I kept showing clips of him. Just cussing like a sailor. He was very, sometimes very creative with the whole, he could go a whole word with only cuss words in it and it'd still be cohesive. Stuff here. That's great. Uh, don't need someone with firepower here. Uh, use the fire powers here because I have a Ghostbuster. Look at this. <laughs> I'm And who can just blow the shit out of everything without trying too hard? I'm I did his best work when he was working as a patent clerk. <laughs> It's like that sound effect. <laughs> it's like we know it all too well. I'm glad that it just instantly just blows up stuff, not like take forever to get, get to do shit. Mm -hmm. Already got. Boom! Already at 11. That's pretty damn good. 
Time for the doctor. <laughs> it's like he can use him and Cyborg can do do computer access stuff, which is awesome. Okay, I'll deal with this. Basically, the eyebrows say I'm in charge. Who are you gonna call? Judging by the state of your uniform, I'd suggest a dry cleaner. Studs. Studs, studs, studs. Blow up all the things. <laughs> Holy crap, I never noticed that before. Look outside that window. Hmm. That's pretty badass. Yeah. The other one I'm thinking I might need because you do need her for specific uh, areas is Chell. Mm -hmm. Mainly because I can get Portal two, uh, Portal 3 that way. Yeah. And while I love the end credits of this game, there's a new Gladys song. <laughs> it's super awesome. Because I'm Batman. And I love in the song she even uh, brings up uh, when she, because it's again, to uh, Chell. Yeah. She she brings up the fact that she's like, you know, Batman's my friend, and uh, you're a loser. This <laughs> 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 is freaking awesome. It's like even though I don't need this for the fire powers. need Batman. That's true. Okay. Oh, that's right. Did I upgrade the back to one? I might not have. Because it, it does have, uh, when you upgrade it enough, it does have um, wa uh, fire extinguishing powers. Right. And then... Uh, the DeLorean has electric powers. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm very pleased. I want you to go down there <laughs> and get right back to me. You know, this reminds me of the time you tried to drill a hole in your forehead. Remember that? That would have worked, worked if, if you hadn't stopped me. <laughs> You're always so concerned about your reputation. Going still.
cash. I have the doctor go save Clara because she's our citizen in peril for this uh, this level. Who are you gonna call? Judging by the state of your uniform, I'd suggest a dry cleaner. Dun, dun, dun. Saving Clara. About time. Been here for hours. Now, run, be clever boy, and remember me. for this thing. This looks like a spaceman. It looks unfinished, though. Maybe completing it is the key. Da 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 da.
Whew. 96,000 already. Calculations, you are in dire need of my help. Boom. Get some. Master Builder. One generator. Check. Let's turn it on. One thirteen. Ooh, hundred thirteen thousand. Detected. 
Failure to comply with upgrading is not an option. I shall banish you to the fiery depths! Break his arm, break his arm! I don't quite think so, Salaman guy. Seems to take for fucking ever. <sighs> oh, and finally, oh, there's a heart magically after for fucking ever. Maximum deletion, what the hell does that even mean? Right? Batman just punching robots in the face.
thing. Night rises. A cemetery. Why is there a cemetery out here? Who are you gonna call? Judging by the state of your uniform, I'd suggest a dry cleaner. Okay, let's do this. Time for big cyborg. All right, it looks like my co-host is passing out, so we're going to call it for this evening. I want to thank everyone who has uh, joined us here in our show tonight. It has been a blast and a half. Yeah. Right now, we're on a, we're in the Weeping Angels graveyard, Janine. Oh, fun times. Oh, right. So, this is where we'll, the next time, uh, so next Saturday, we'll pick up where we left off here, play, playing some more. Okay, okay. Alrighty. Thank you all for hanging out. Thank you all for uh, being fantastic. I will make sure to uh, check out Big Brickhead. Thank you again for the follow. I'll make sure to head over to your channel and check you out. Um, I want you all to have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Catch me again on... Actually, it probably won't be Tuesday. I'll probably... Uh, it might be a late, late podcast... Uh, late stream, depending on how long our podcast goes. But... Tuesday, probably, if I don't see it, it'll be Monday or t uh, Wednesday that I'll switch around my schedule, schedule for the week. But I want you get, uh, to stay being awesome. Janine, thank you all. Thank you for coming. Of course. All righty. Rangers, let the power protect you. I will catch you all next time. See ya.